one go good morning everyone today we shall be talking about long term decision making so what we will be talking today is what do you mean by long term decision making what are the factors involved in long term decision making what are the appraisal methods we shall be using we shall be covering payback period we shall be talking about net present value and also about calculating of irr so first let us understand what is this long term decision making why is this important long term decision making if you look into it first part is it requires substantial amount of funding let's say for an example you are trying to build a factory you are trying to expand it into a new market set up or buy a new machinery or you are trying to let's say build a flyover or build a building the amount required is huge so you are setting up a substantial amount of money for investment second part is it takes long term for you to get your money back if i would have just let's say bought a raw materials i sell it i get the money back whereas when i say i am trying to invest in a building or a machinery it takes beyond 2 3 years to get my money back third one is my irreversible factor what is this irreversible factor i am talking about let's say i am trying to build a factory i have started constructing it after 3 years i decided that hey you know what this factory is not going to work even if i try shutting it down the amount of losses i am going to suffer is going to be larger if i buy a machine and let's say it's not going to serve my purpose anymore i am going to lose a substantial amount of money so it becomes very crucial for me to make sure that i am very considerate about my decision i shall make sure i shall do all my calculations right before i invest my substantial amount of money into it now second part of it so now i know why am i doing this let us try looking into my appraisal methods first part what i shall be looking into it is my cost benefit analysis what is the money i am going to put in what are the benefits of setting up this project second one is i try assess whether it is financially worthwhile if i have a cost benefit and financially it is viable i shall look at it should i go ahead with the project or not so with this we shall now start looking into the various appraisal methods i have three methods i shall be learning in this chapter first method is known as my payback period second is the most popular is my npv method or we call it as net present value method the third one is my internal rate of return or we call it as irr so let us look into the first method which is my payback period now what is this payback period i am talking about payback the word itself says how much time are you going to take to pay back your investments now payback period says what is the time taken to pay back money invested that is what your definition wants to now what is going to be your decision making criteria are we talking of profits or are we talking of the cash flows payback period does not take into consideration profits i am more concerned about my cash flows from a project how much am i investing it how much am i going to get my money back therefore concepts like my non cash items depreciation or even my credit sales i am not concerned about i am more concerned about my sales which is my cash sales and also the money received from my debtors right so now let us try looking into the criteria for decision making now on the payback i have two criteria set one i am going to set my target return period let's say i have a target return period of 5 years that is i have said that i shall accept a project provided i am going to get my money back in 5 years but in this project i have got my entire money back within 4 years now what do you do you have a target return of 5 years you have got your money back within 4 years that means you can go ahead with a project sometimes what happens i have decided to invest on a project but to the same project there are multiple ways of achieving it multiple ways of doing this 
So we call it as mutually exclusive project. That is, you have one amount you have decided to invest, but you have to choose between two projects, which project will you choose? I shall be always looking into a project which is going to give my money back in the quickest possible amount of time. Right? So with this, what we shall do is, we shall look into two examples. First example where I shall set a target return period and I shall look into it the time in which I am going to get my money back. The second where I shall have two projects and I shall look into the project which is going to get my money quickest back. Right? With this, let us look into our first question. Now, see this. X Limited is planning to invest 500,000. The estimated cash flows from the project. So he is saying that if he invests 500,000 in this project, he is planning to get his money back at the end of year 1, 1 lakh, year 2, 2 lakhs, year 3, 3 lakhs, year 4, 4 lakhs, year 5, 5 lakhs. And I have said that my target return period is 4 lakhs, 4 years, sorry. Should I accept the project or not? Now, let us try looking into the decision making criteria. I told you that I have a target return period of 4 years. The money invested is 500,000. Should I get my money back within 4 years? If I get it before 4 years, I'll accept the project. After 4 years, I'm going to reject the project. Let us try understanding certain terms. First one. How much did I plan to invest is 500,000, right? I think, yes, I have planned to invest 500,000. Now what I do is, the time at which I am going to invest, I always call it as year zero. Year zero always says it's the time I have decided to invest. If I have decided to invest today, we call that to be year zero. 500,000, are you getting the money or are you paying towards the project? Are you, so can I say is to be inflow or outflow of the project? What do you think it is? I am putting my money into it. That is, it's going to be a cash outflow. Now let us try using this. I have a year zero which is basically my investment where I am spending 500,000. I am spending 500,000, that is my cash outflow. Now, year one, you are getting back how much? 1 lakh. So, have you recovered your entire money? The answer is no, because I have to recover still 400,000. Now, let us look into the year two. I have to still recover 400,000. I have recovered 2 lakhs more or 200,000 more. I still have to recover 200,000. Year 3, I should recover 200,000. I have recovered 300,000. That means I can easily say that I have recovered my project between year 2 and year 3. What is my target period? four years. So should I accept the project? Definitely yes. Why? Because I have recovered my project money before the target payback period of four years. Now, let me try understanding what is this exact period. I know I have got my money. See here. Year one, again I am trying to repeat. I should have recovered five lakhs. Year one, I have recovered one lakh. Therefore, I still have four more lakhs to recover. Year 2, I have to recover 4 lakhs. I have recovered 2 lakhs out of it. That is, I should still recover 2 lakhs more. Third year, I should have recovered 2 lakhs. I have recovered 3 lakhs. I have ended up recovering more. To find out my exact payback period, let us just focus on this. How much I should recover is 200,000. How much I should have re I have recovered is 300,000. I am recovering my money after 2 years, so you are going to write 2 years plus the money what you have to recover 200 plus or divided by the money you wanted to recover or money you have recovered 300 multiply by 12 months. So that will give you by 4 also.
all the zeros cancel. Two years, eight months is my payback period. Again, I'm saying, now I was saying it is between two years and three, uh, three years. I exactly figured out when did I recover the money. It is between year two and year three, that is two years and eight months. What was your target payback period? Four years. So should you accept the project? Definitely yes. Now let us come to the second scenario. What was the second scenario I was talking about? Trying to find which is the quickest project. Between two projects, I have to choose a project which is going to give me the quickest payback period. So now let's look into the second question. See, I have a project where ABC Limited has 400,000 to invest and it has two projects P and Q. I have two projects P and Q. I know what are my estimated cash flows for year one, year two, year three, year four and year five. Now I have to choose either for project one or project two, that is project P or project Q. So first let me just fill into it. Year zero, what is this year zero? I said the time in which I'm gonna invest my project. Is it an inflow or an outflow? Yes, it is definitely my outflow because I'm investing on the project. So first let me find out for the project P. I have an outflow of 400,000. Year one, I've recovered 100. So how much more should I recover? I have to recover 300 more. Second year, how much did you recover? 200,000. So still, you have to recover how much? 100 more thousand dollars. Third year, how much you should recover? 100,000. You have recovered what? 200,000. That means my payback period is between year two and year three. If I have to find out the exact time frame, I can say it's two years. How much I should have recovered? 100,000. How much I have recovered? 200,000 multiplied by 12. That is two years, six months. Are you clear? So my first project I have recovered within two years, six months. Let us look into the second project. Now second project, my year zero outflow remains the same. 400,000. Year one, how much did you spend? 50,000 is what you have recovered. So how much more you have to recover? 400,000 minus 50. I still have to recover $350,000. Second year, how much did you recover? 100,000. So you still have to recover 250. Third year, how much did you recover? 200,000. So still you did not recover. So you still are left with 250. That means look into it. In the project queue, I am exceeding beyond three years. Should I accept the project? The answer is no. Why? Because project P, I am recovering in two years and six months. Two years and six months. I told you I shall choose a project which shall give me the quickest payback. If I have to go further and identify how, what is the exact time, let's look into it. Three years, that is because it falls between third and fourth year, plus how much I should have recovered? 50,000. How much I recovered? 300,000 multiplied by 12. So that will be 1, 6, 2, 3 years plus 2 months. Are you clear with it? So we took both the projects. First project gave me a payback period within two years, six months. Second year gave second project gave me a project return within two years, sorry, three years and two months. So I shall be accepting my project Q. Right? So we have covered two cases. Now let us just try looking into the complications what can arise. The first one, how do you treat a depreciation in the payback period? I started off the question of uh, the explanation saying that. In a 
in a payback scenario i am concerned with cash profits and not my profits or we say cash inflows and not the profits so if i go further if they have given you profits in the question what i shall do is i shall add back whatever is the depreciation given to find out my cash flow or cash profit again i am trying to summarize how do you treat depreciation in a payback period if they give you cash profits what you need to do is you need to start adding back depreciation that becomes the cash flow you shall be considering i hope this is clear the second new item is when i have an equal cash flow let's say for an example i am investing 100000 in a project every year i am expected to get a cash inflow of 20000 every year i am getting an equal cash inflow of 20000 so how many years will i take simple 100 1000 divided by 20000 that shall be 5 years so the formula is simple whatever is your investment divided by your annual cash flow acf is annual cash flow this formula i can only use when i have equal cash flows right so let us just recap before we go to the next topic so what all did we talk about it we spoke about payback what is payback payback i told you is the time taken to pay back the money investment that is to get back the money what you have invested i said the decision decision making criteria i shall be focusing on the cash flows and not the profits next one i shall be looking into the target payback period that is i will set a target payback period i shall always choose a project if it is better than the target payback period so we looked into one illustration second one is between two projects i said i shall always choose a project which is quickest and it has to be mutually exclusive that is i can only choose one among the two projects or else i would always prefer to choose two projects because i am making money and running a business next part how do i treat a depreciation i told you whenever there are profits and depreciation is given you need to add back those profits last part equal cash flows what did i say equal cash flows whenever you have an equal cash flows you just have to divide your investment with your annual cash flow you shall get your investment or uh, sorry your payback period i hope you understood it and i would always prefer if you guys want the notes what i have written you can just drop in your mail id in your comment section and we shall forward it to you thank you and we shall be looking into the further videos where we shall be talking about what is time value of money what is npv what is your irr hope you have liked it please comment